Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter, and today I am joined by Jackie Johnson. She's also a fellow Master Club Fitter, but also a very good golfer. And Jackie reached out to me recently. We were talking about comparing her driver versus the new Stealth driver. She told me it was time to upgrade. We're going to find out if it's time to upgrade. So we're going to be comparing the new Stealth versus your gamer. So we're going to go through a driver fitting and we'll see what you end up with. Yeah, I'm interested to see the total numbers. I know that with the new Stealth, it tends to be a little less spin. So I definitely would expect that we'd get some higher ball speeds and a little bit more distance with the Stealth. But whether or not you know, it, it's fully time to upgrade at this point, we'll, we'll find out today. But um, I'm interested to see the different you know, shaft comparisons as well. You know, right now I have the Ventus 5R Valicor. Um, and really loving it so far, so it'd be good to test that with a new head as well, along with some other shafts to kind of throw in there to see if that would make a difference too. Yeah, so uh, th this is a good time to remind our viewers what we do at Second Swing with regards to a tour van driver fitting. So when you come in and when you bring your, your driver in, we'll take a look at the specs and we'll take a look at some numbers with your driver. Then we'll do a head test with the same golf shaft and compare the head against each other with the same loft and see how they compare. Then we'll dive a little deeper into golf shafts. So you, you mentioned a couple of golf shafts that you're interested in. I for sure am interested in the Autoflex because it's, it's a way to try and pick you up a little more club speed if we can. Yep. So it's always fun to throw that in the, in the mix. But also there's, there's other good golf shafts out there that maybe aren't quite as expensive because I know that's quite the investment yes. to go to an Autoflex golf shaft. I don't know if you're gonna wanna spend that much money, but if it's worth it, maybe it is worth it. Yep. But, uh, but yeah, and then, then we'll kind of dial in loft. So then you know, we know when we're changing the loft, especially with the tailor-made driver, what you're actually doing is you're changing the face angle up a little bit. So we might be able to fine tune your direction even better by making subtle little adjustments. Yeah, I'm excited to see what the results will be, especially because it's been about two years since the driver fitting. So let's do it. Yeah, let's take a look at some numbers of your driver and see what you got. Okay, so Jackie, we just took a look at some specs with your driver, we measured it. 45 and a quarter is the length. Uh, also measured the swing weight. It came in at like C9.7 is what it was kind of flashing around at. Okay. I also took off the club head. I always like to do that with a tailor-made tip just to make sure it's a right-handed tip in there, uh, which it is. So I always said it's <laughs> standard. So standard 10.5 degrees of loft on your driver. All right. Let's see some shots with your gamer and then we'll take a look at some numbers. Okay. That was better. Oh. A little bit open, but you got away with that. Little little toe miss. Yeah. That's why I went to the shaft though. Cause I kinda I don't know. The Valacor definitely like helps stabilize. I had the Ventus Red just regular. Yep. And I tend to my miss hits would be like miss okay. like all over so maybe velocore and twist face helping you out possibly yeah <laughs> so that's like the shot shape that like i i like with the driver yep. just having a little bit of a slight draw um now you, when you say like is that your your go-to on on the golf course is yeah. to try and play a yeah. slight little draw yeah okay i mean i i've worked on because i used to slice the ball i mean well, I wouldn't say slice, but I used to fade the ball. Like that was my standard like shape. And I really worked hard on trying to miss hit off the toe so that I don't, that my misses aren't that, like yep. that one shot over there. Um, I'm the same way. Well, that one, one shot over that, there was, oh, actually I stayed there because yeah. the toe helped you out. Right. Sure, even though your face was, was open. Yeah. Um, let's take a look at some numbers. Let's kind of see what we're, we're looking at with regards to some averages. Uh, I always like to look at hit location as well so we can we can bring that up and see where we're at so pretty good pretty yep. close to the middle I know you said you like to maybe miss it slightly you know on, yep. on the toe side so you see that you're pretty much right in the middle as, as we can see there there's that one that you missed on the toe side but your face was open so you got away with it overall yep um, I think that was this shot here yeah it was but otherwise you can see here very very good in the middle of the face uh, I always like, and I know you, you like to use this optimizer yep. too. I always like to bring <laughs> these numbers up and, and take a look at your, your averages overall and 
we can see here that everything is falling within the, the blue. I want to make sure that this is all the, all the sharp. I think it is. Yeah. So as a club fitter, you know a thing or two, <laughs> yeah. right? So we can see here with, with when we bring up these optimizers here, based on what we're seeing for max carry and total distance, uh, you can see the amount of spin loft, the amount of ball speed that you should be generating, kind of the launch angle, amount of spin that you should also be generating, and the height. Um, so you're making this harder on me right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully some newer technology can maybe, maybe help out. Yeah. Or maybe we can see if there's some gains. You talked about the golf shaft. Yeah. There might be some gains there to pick up a little bit more club speed. But when I look at this right off the bat, I know you've been fitted fitted well. Yeah. You know, we're going to talk about your goals. So your, your goals, you like to hit a little drawer. Maybe we make the club a little bit more upright. Yep. Or maybe we change the loft up a little bit to, to help you out. Or we can, we can play around with that too. All right. But uh, this always makes it hard for me when I see, see those numbers right off the bat. So... Right, right, spot on. Let's just t talk about what we're seeing here with your, with your averages. So your club speed, 87.7. So in a fitting, that's a good way for us to figure out kind of what shaft flex we should be playing. Yeah. Um, you hover just under 90 miles an hour, usually with, with your driver from what I've, from what I've yeah. seen. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little bit slower today maybe, so. Yeah, but you know, I've seen you get over 90 yeah. before. Yeah. Um, but I mean, generally speaking, that 90 is that cutoff. It's kind of between stiff and, and regular. It's mm -hmm. kind of where we have that, that cutoff piece. And you're playing like a, a regular golf shaft. Yep. Um, if you're 95 miles an hour with your club speed, we might, might want to go a little, little bit heavier, a little bit stiffer. Mm -hmm. But that's, uh, that's the club speed piece. Think of that as potential distance. Mm -hmm. Ball speed is you know where, where it's at with regards to maximum distance. The higher the ball speed, the higher the smash factor, the further you can get. We're leaving a little bit on the table. We know it's 147. So there is potential to pick up just a little bit more distance overall. Uh, launch at 14.9, um, it's good. You know, if we can have a high launch and low spin, you can pick up a little bit more distance overall. Your spin was like 24, 22. I mean, these are good numbers. You yeah. get up on the ball, you're four degrees up. Your landing angle is 34, I like to say 30 to 40 degrees with a landing angle. So as we saw on the, <laughs> you know, on the optimizer, as we're seeing on these numbers and what we're seeing in a lot of fittings, is we're in a good spot. Mm -hmm. But I know you always want to test new stuff out. Yep. Let's do it. So Let's do it. what we'll, we'll first do here is we'll grab the stealth, we'll put it in the exact same golf shaft. So we'll put your shaft in this head, and we'll see a head-to-head -head comparison first. Okay, so Jackie, let's see five shots with the stealth driver now with the Kay. same shaft. Like that. Yeah. A little higher launch, a little less spin. Yep. There's another one there, a little higher launch with low spin. Out of the gate, this like head feels um, lighter. Like okay. more aerodynamic is how I would describe that. Just without really talking about the feel. Yep. Oof. Okay. Take that out. A little pull, we can probably, we, the nice thing in fittings is we do have both delete buttons, <laughs> so we can, we can get rid of that. And that's for everyone. When you come for a fitting, <laughs> we're not going to judge if you hit a bad shot. Uh. I have noticed you've got three shots here where you've got a little higher launch and a little lower spin with this club. Yeah. Let's hit one more. Good ball speed, good launch. Yeah. A little higher spin there. Yeah, that one was a little higher spin. So let's take a look at, at some averages here. And you're swinging just a little faster. Yep. What's, what's interesting here is you actually your ball speed was half a mile an hour lower. Um, but if we take a look at that launch angle, and I mentioned we'd want to maybe launch it just a little bit higher and keep that spin rate down. Yep. Higher launch at 17.4, or spin rate just a little bit lower. You're going to carry the ball a little bit further, and it's going to go a little bit further overall. Yep. Um, that was that was pretty good, and let's do the same thing here again, and now kind of see where we're at with the stealth 
and see if we notice any, anything different. So the only thing we're seeing here that you were leaving on the table now when you were hitting the stealth yep. was ball speed. I'm willing to bet you maybe didn't hit it in the middle of the face every single time when you were hitting this. And let's just take a look and see your, your hit location. So that's the spot you like to miss, you like to miss yep. on, right? Yeah. Yep. When you do that, you do leave a little bit of ball speed on the table, but you do get that higher launch and that lower spin by catching it that part of the face overall. Um, so you're basically your impact offset, you've gone 10 millimeters toward the toe and eight millimeters up. When you were hitting yours, you were five millimeters towards the toe and actually one millimeter down. So I don't know if that was just different, may maybe you making adjustments there yeah. after seeing your hit location on, on the face, but that's just why ball speed was just a little bit lower. But overall you can see just how forgiving the stealth is even when you don't catch to the middle of the face. You didn't hit it in the middle of the face, but you will notice your ball speed and your distance was still retained really well. Um, let's go back to the, the averages here and, and see if we can dissect this a little bit more. We'll bring up the dispersion screen and let's just see where we're at. So if we're looking over here on the, on the right side, the, the white dots here, that was with your club. The yellow dots here, that was with the stealth. One thing we're noticing here, this is set at carry distance. Every single shot carried a little bit further with the stealth versus with your mm -hmm. gamer. So we got some gains, right? Yeah. We got some gains right off, right off the bat. Switch this here to total distance. You see total distance may be a little bit, little bit closer, but you can't complain with the dispersion no. circle as well. So the dispersion circle is a little bit tighter. And I'd say, yes, it's, it's worth the upgrade. And when you do hit it right in the middle of the face, that ball speed and that smash back number is just, just going to go up as well. Right. What can you tell me about the, the feel between the two clubs? Oh, the stealth is definitely softer. Like, that's the number one thing that I get out of it is just like the, you know, different carbon face that they put in here is just, a, it's definitely softer. It feels soft. It feels forgiving. Yep. Um, but you can still get that feel of impact. So, like, where you miss hit it. So, you're not losing that just because of that forgiveness. But, yep. uh, Definitely a different feel, like compared to the Sim Max or the Sim 2. Uh, I've obviously I've hit all of them at this point, and the Stealth definitely feels the best to me of just that initial forgiveness that it does bring with that different face in there. Okay, yeah, it's it definitely sounds a little bit softer versus the the Sim line. Yeah, um, it's definitely the Sim line was definitely quite a bit quite a bit louder. And it's also a different look. Can you see that red face when you're looking down at it at all? No, it doesn't bother me at doesn't all. Doesn't bother when, you at all. When I first like, when it first came out, I was like, I, I would <laughs> think it would be like it would be yeah. very n noticeable, but no, nah, it like doesn't. You can't really tell. Um, I think the whole black look really kind of mutes that, you know. So having all black on the top kind of just, I mean makes that a little bit duller when yep. it comes to that face. So overall, I don't mind it. It wouldn't be something I would like say I wouldn't get it just because of the red face. Right. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so so here's the thing. We, you, you were talking in, in the intro a little about maybe getting a little more ball speed, a little yep. bit more distance. Let's face it, manufacturers, they're limited to how fast that ball can come off the club face. Mm -hmm. So the biggest difference you're going to see is MOI and it's going to be forgiveness, so off center hits. We notice your dispersion pattern was a little bit tighter with the stealth. We notice you didn't catch it quite in the middle of the face like you did with your gamer, yet you were hitting the ball further. And mm -hmm. that's what you're going to see with regards to forgiveness and gains with the, the stealth versus an older golf club. And I think that's why it's reason to, to upgrade. Right. Yeah. OK, so I want to continue on with this with the stealth. And I'm going to stick with 10 and a half because we're seeing your launch profiles and spin profiles really good. Yeah. I mean, you obviously probably fit yourself into, into <laughs> that and yes. know another thing or two. Um, but I do want to test golf shafts. Okay. Uh, I want to see, notice any, any differences here in, um, if there's any differences in club speed, any differences in dispersion pattern, or any kind of gain. So we do have a couple of different shaft options that we're going to we test with. You know, the stock options, so you've got the, the Vantage Red that just kind of that comes with the Stealth. But we also have a couple other different options here that we want to kind of throw in, on the mix. So 
recommended to you, I believe, right? We've yes. got this uh, the graphite design VR5S. Yep. So this technically is a stiff golf shaft, but it kind of plays a little bit closer, softer into towards a regular golf shaft. Yep. Yep. Uh, I think everyone will recognize this golf shaft now. So we've got the Auto Flex golf shaft, uh, a little longer. So swing weight is going to be key with, with dialing this, this golf shaft in. Mm -hmm. Kind of C8 to D0 is the, is the ideal range for this golf shaft here. And we've got the, um, this is the SF405 shaft, mm -hmm. which is more of that club speed that you kind of fit in, into, uh, about 85 to 95 miles an hour with regards to, to club speed. Got those two. Was there another golf shaft that you wanted to, to, to compare here as well, or you gonna maybe just play around with these? No, I think these those three? are. Yeah, I think those are the main ones. Um, just based off of what I know from my swing speed and my tendencies, like there'd definitely be a uh, one of the better fits for sure. I mean, you yep. could test so many golf shafts that we have, but at the end of the day, these um, just knowing the tendencies with these shafts, I think they're are gonna be a good fit for one of these, so. Yeah, and it's, it's always gonna be player dependent with, with golf shaft. Yep. And the most important thing, and we're skipping all of this because you already got that dialed in. Yeah. The most important thing is playing the right loft, the right kind of driver for you. We know what we're seeing here with the optimization uh, within TrackMan that you're fitting within. We've got a high launch, we've got a low spin, it's ideal. So the yep. loft on the driver is perfect. Yeah. The head design is perfect. Yeah. Now we just got to see if we get any extra gains with some with different golf shafts. All right. And I'm going to start first with the stock option. So this is just the the new uh, Ventus Red. So it's going to be a slightly higher spinning, higher launching profile versus the Ventus Blue that you've got here. So this will be fun to see if stock versus upgraded golf shaft. See which one wins. <laughs> nah. Good bowl speed there. Yeah, that was good. Yep. Uh. There we go. That sounds solid. Yep. There we go. Is that five? That is five. All right. Okay, so we'll take a look at the dispersion now. We can start looking here. And you look at your club speed was 88. Actually, you lost just a touch club speed, but you did pick up ball speed. Yep. And now because you're picking up ball speed, your efficiency number is going to go up just a little bit, 1.47. Uh, an interesting Ventus shaft giving you just, a, you know, that Ventus, 5R shaft is giving you just a little bit more, um, more ball speed overall and a little bit lower spin. So it's chasing out just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You did lose a little bit of carry distance with it though. And I think that's because you had this one here you kind of tugged over here yeah. to the left. Um, speaking of left, it was giving you more of that profile, that little more draw bias yeah. that, you, that you do like. Yeah. yeah. Um, just hitting this in another video, I noticed that with this shaft, for whatever reason, I, I have the tendency to definitely turn it over more. So I'm not surprised by being more left of center with yep. the shaft, so. Yeah. yeah, if we take a look here, face angle, yeah, with face angle was just a little bit more close there with this shaft. Okay, so club speed. How do we get more club speed? Well, maybe a longer, lighter golf shaft. Yep. It's wearing the auto flex kind of comes into play. All right, I'm excited. So we'll see if we want to splash out here <laughs> and uh, invest in an expensive golf shaft. <laughs> yeah, that would be an expensive club right there. <laughs> and with our premium golf shafts when we're doing fittings, we use our old fit system. So nice thing with TaylorMade is it's, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. We just have this, this separate different little Nice thing with TaylorMade, it's a little bit easier. We just kind of got this little separate little cog. Every mm -hmm. manufacturer has a different one, but we don't have to put different screws in with this one. So we basically put it on the, the head here, um, and that way we can test this shaft in any driver head that we want, whether that be TaylorMade, Callaway, Ping, Mizuno. Yeah, it's super like nice. That. It's really good. Oh. Looks like first swing right there was a little bit of a miss hit. Yeah. 
What, what was different on that one? You picked up club speed, but this is where. Um, yeah, that was just, the, I think the weight just way different. So adjusting to that and just the timing of my swing, since I'm so used to a certain weight, yep. is going to be a little bit different to get used to. But we'll see if I can adjust here yep. as we go through. There we go. Come on. They stay down, spin. <laughs> nice. Highest carry of the day right there, 212.5. Eh. Well, I tried to change that. <laughs> Which I did. Yeah. Let's see one more. Yeah. All right. That's pretty good. Okay, so we'll notice we're gonna have probably do a little bit more editing with this golf shaft. You see that little bit, little bit larger dispersion pattern. Um, the first shot of the day was a little missed, so we probably take that one out. Um, let's kind of talk about the differences in, the, in that golf shaft. We noticed that you did pick up some club speed. Yeah. You actually that first swing was actually 90.8, and they were all kind of 88 to 89 miles an hour with the club speed. That last swing was 132.8 with the ball speed. That was smoked. That mm -hmm. was 215 carry going 237. And that definitely has set the bar yeah. with regards to distance. Um, I would say, like, and I've tested this Autoflex before. It's just, it's so light that, and I've seen this with fittings too, that when you're, when you're testing them, it's so much different that it's sometimes really hard to, like, get a true feel for it and like see that result in there. So I think like over time, especially if you were to get used to something like this light, that you'd see a little bit better results with swing speed and dispersion. But I, d I felt like I didn't really have a whole lot of control. Like, you know, that first swing, obviously I gained a lot of club head speed just with the first swing and just yep. not really, but then after like feeling like I didn't have control, then I like dialed back. So I think for me, that's the biggest key here is like, I would have to get used to something like this, but yep. it was, I mean, it's definitely light and that part is way different, but I can see how this could help a lot of people with gaining club head speed. Right. Them. And there has been quite a few LPGA players that have been playing the Autoflex yeah. golf shaft for, for sure. Uh, I think honestly what it comes back to is distance versus dispersion. Yeah. And we have this conversation all, all the time yeah. is you will notice here what circle is the largest. Well, the Autoflex golf shaft, that circle is the largest. However, if we look here, you've got, you know, one here that went 237 with carry of 215. You got 212 carry going 235, 212 carry going 235. Mm -hmm. And we got one here. Um, with the Ventus Red, that was 213 going 236, but nothing really touched those three swings. So, yeah. yes, you picked up distance. However, you'll notice what happened on your miss hits. Yeah. You got Which this one want. way over here. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be player dependent. It depends on the golf course you're playing, and it depends if all you're searching for is extra club speed, and you're okay with sacrificing a little bit of dispersion. Yeah, it, it's probably going to be a win. Is it seven hundred dollars worth? No, for me. For no. you, no. Okay, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Especially when I already have an upgraded shaft and that's already winning out right now. Yep. Yeah, for me, it's not. I wouldn't do that. So. Right. All okay. Right. So, we'll notice your club speed. You know, you're hovering on between around about nine, just under ninety miles an hour. And I know Danny recommended this golf shaft here yeah. for you to, to test. So. Let's see what happens here if we go to a stiff golf shaft, but a very, very soft um, flex stiff golf shaft. Felt good. Good ball speed, wow. Wow. Yeah. I was going to say it felt good. Yeah. That was, I mean, it was lower. It chased yep. out there, yeah. I tried to adjust and that wasn't a great. And you delete that one. <laughs> we'll miss it. Yeah. Good miss it, but that was me. Your efficiency though. dropped. Should be pretty good. Yep. Ah, 
Ah. Uh, well, that changed the spin a little bit. Okay, so five shots with that golf shaft. And we, we noticed some interesting results here with, with this shaft. Yeah. But the one thing I do want to point out is it definitely carried quite a lot shorter than the other golf shaft. Yeah. Uh, we switched this to total distance, however. You did hit your longest shot of the day with this golf shaft. However, if it was soft, out, soft conditions, yeah. there's no way it's going to roll out 36 yards. Yeah. Uh, we noticed a couple of really interesting spin readings. 1,600, 1,200, 2,000, 2,000, 2,100. So bull was not staying in the air. Total distance, yeah, wasn't too far away. But you know, I always like to revert back to this, this carry distance because yeah. you, you need to have optimal carry to generate the most distance consistently on the golf course, depending on what consist conditions you're playing in. Uh, I think this was just too, this golf shaft just spun too low for you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'd agree. Um, it felt good. Like the profile itself felt good. It just, uh, yeah, too, a little too low. Yeah, we also noticed we go to the, the VR5S, you lost a little bit of club speed. Actually lost one mile an hour club speed versus the, the Autoflex golf shaft. Yeah, it's a little shorter so, too. So yep. part of it is, you know, that, but. Yeah, and I think, then we, we look here and notice what happens when we go just a little bit shorter. Yeah. As you're consistently catching out on the toe side. And it's almost like it's a little too far on the toe side. Well, I think this is important too, because like for someone like myself, that's 5'4. You know, I think a lot of people say, oh, I need, you know, shorter clubs, shorter driver, whatever. I play standard length iron, standard length driver for the most part. Like everything is pretty much standard, even though I am technically shorter than standard. Yep. Um, so I think that's also a key component when fitting is just because you might be a certain height, whether it's taller, you could be 6'5", or you could be 5'3", 5'2", doesn't always necessarily mean that going a certain length is, you know, what you need to do. That's why getting fitted is important. Yeah, as long as you're hitting it in the middle of the face yeah. and you're hitting the ball straight, yeah, go, go as long as you can. Yeah. That's going to generate more club speed with, with the driver. Uh, auto flex here. A little bit, little bit longer, we'll notice it moved a little bit closer towards the middle of the face from there to there um, at overall, which was really good. Um, numbers overall, though, I mean, that's ranked this from highest carry distance to here. We'll notice that Ventus Blue 5R with Velocor with the stealth driver head was kind of the best carry distance, pushing yep. 209.6 on, on average. And I always like to look at these little numbers, so the consistency numbers, plus or minus 1.9. So it's doing the same thing over and over and over. We can see that on this screen here. We'll notice this, cir this yellow circle, notice it's smaller, it's shorter from north to south. Mm -hmm. So it was consistent overall there too. Um, Autoflex was second. Uh, you did hit your highest carry distance with that particular shaft today. If we take a look at, at carry distance, we can see here 215.3 was the highest carry going 237. Um, if we look here at the other one, you got uh, 212, 211, 209, 209. It was just very consistent overall. There's one that's a little bit shorter, but that was a little bit of a miss hit because we know the spin rate went mm -hmm. up a little bit on that one. So, I mean, if it was me, honestly, you're making a change club head to stealth, but I would probably stick with the golf shaft that you're playing. Yeah, I kind of figured that was going to be the case, but it's always fun to try yeah. know, different shafts and stuff. I think the Valcor definitely has more stabilization. You can see, like, you know, when I get questions asked, well, what's the difference between, like, the stock Ventus versus putting the Valcor in there? Well, this is a great example of it just stabilizes that golf shaft, especially on the miss hits that we're going to be able to hit, you know, the fairway yep. more often than, than we would with some of the other stock options. Um, not that the stock options are bad. I mean, I still hit that stock option for the Stealth, the, you know, Ventus Red 5R well. It just is, hey, how can we tighten that dispersion a little bit better? So. Right. And then we're going to talk about your goals. What are you trying to do on the, on the golf course? You talk you like, you like to hit a little drawer. You know, you're hitting it, you know, pretty straight. But there's a couple that were hovering over on the left side. 
do you have a few swings left in you? Yep. I want to I want to try just a couple of things. I want to do two different options. Okay. I want to try. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to okay. do. I'm yeah, sure no. you'll probably take a look and you'll uh, you'll I, you'll probably. I laugh, already kind of know. Yeah. yeah. You probably kind of already know. So I'm going to actually switch the club head up. So it's still the stealth driver. Yep. And we're going to do it with the Ventus Blue 5R Velo Core Shaft. But I just wanted to play around with something. I will tell the viewers after you hit the shots what we did, just that way Kay. you're not trying to manipulate anything. Yep. So please try not to, to look. Try to change that. That was. I'm just not hitting it solid. No. Okay, so so Jackie, what I what I did there is the, I changed the loft to a nine degree head. Yep but I actually put it at plus two. Yep. What I'm actually doing is I'm closing the club face. Yep. So I close the club face four degrees. We'll notice here, yellow was kind of where, where we're at with regards to total distance. Mm -hmm. We'll notice how it shifted. Furthest one you missed to the right was this one right here. Yep. You notice how it shifted just a little bit further over here to the, to the left side. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing is actually I'm closing the cl close face four degrees right. by putting it at plus two. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought maybe it would give you a little more loft on a 9 degree head, give you a little bit more ball speed. It moved the direction, but it really didn't pick you up ball speed. Yeah. And I, you also could be at the end of the fitting here too, but you would notice the ball speed. Um, actually, it's not bad, you know, 127.2, one yeah. but, you know, we didn't really pick up big gains or anything like that. Maybe moving it a little bit. I, 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 the thing I noticed was that it was pretty lofted. Yep. Like, I just felt like I was hitting it higher, so, I yep. don't know. Let's try one more, one yeah. more option. Moving it a notch. I'm actually going to go back to the 10.5 head. Okay. You, you need loft. You need yeah. loft to stay the get the ball to stay in the air. Um, you actually, your carry distance when you were hitting that was only 200 yeah. um, yards on average, and you notice that was actually the lowest carry distance of them all. So. Yeah, I felt like I just didn't hit any of them solid, honestly, for whatever reason. <laughs> yeah. I would agree. I mean, your efficiency number dropped a little bit. Good bull speed. Good bull speed there, too. That was good. Yep. A little miss hit there. Good miss hit, but clearly a miss hit. Yeah. Get that one out of here. Stay in the air bowl. Nice. Oh. Hit one more. All right. <laughs> okay, so th this is this is pretty cool here to see. Yeah. So look at that dispersion. Look at this this red circle amongst you know. There's no doubt that this head with that golf shaft is definitely your winner. You can yeah. see your your three best dispersions: the yellow circle, the green circle, and the, this this red circle here. Mm -hmm. we're, we're also the best. You also got the Ventus red when you're hitting the five R. That was also pretty good. So. Definitely the best overall, but you can't complain with this red circle here to finish with. Yeah. No, it definitely, uh, I mean, I'd take all five of those shots, so. And this is also at the end of a fitting, too. Yeah. So one thing to kind of point up here is we're at 40 swings. Yeah. 40 swings in a, in a driver fitting is maxed out. Yeah. And on the golf course, you're not going to swing driver 40 times in 45 minutes. Right. So this is a good way to kind of test your fatigue and see how you're performing on holes, say, 
15 through 18. That stands out to me right there. I'm going to guess when you're fresh, it would probably shift up here just a little bit more with a little bit more speed. Yep. Yeah. So what did I do with, with that setting? We up went back right. to, yep, we went to the 10.5 head. Let's face it, you need loft to get the ball up in, in, in the air. Yep. Um, we can get that ball to launch high and, sp and spin low, upright, but I just put it one more notch higher. Mm -hmm. So if, what I do with the with tailor-made tip is I flip it 180 degrees, mm -hmm. and then it's just one notch slightly towards higher, so I'm giving you just a little bit more loft in an upright setting. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much 11 degrees in an yep. upright setting. So. Yeah, no, it, it felt good, and um, I've messed around with upright settings as well, and I think, yeah, I mean, you can't complain about that, so. And I was just chasing your goals. You yeah. told me that you like to see a little drawer. Yeah. If you had told me you like to see a little fade, I wouldn't have touched that setting. Right. But I was always doing, I was chasing what you want to see on the golf course, and I was just trying to tighten that dispersion as much as I could. Yeah. And we could see we were kind of creeping and creeping and creeping a little bit closer together. Yep. I don't think that were your best five shots because you were tired. No. Yeah. But <laughs> you can't complain with how tight that red circle is at the end. No, definitely not. Yeah. Uh, finish off, you know, what we do in a, in a fittings, we always talk about golf grips, what kind of grip you, what grip you play. What, what grip do you play normally? Oh, I've been playing, I've been testing out various types of grips, so softer to more corded. Um, this grip, honestly, just was on this, so just the Tour Velvet 360 on yep. TaylorMade. Um, honestly, I like it. Uh, right now, my current driver, uh, well, before I switched shafts was just like the super stroke, so it was really, really soft, which eh, I'm, I'm yeah. kind of, I'm going towards more just the standard, you know, stock options okay. with the 360. Do your hands yeah. sweat when you're outside at all? You have a hard time holding no. on to the club? Okay. No. So yeah, like a, a standard tour valve yeah. would be a good option. My concern is if your hands sweated, I'd maybe give you a little bit more of a corded yeah. grip, but Soft is going to affect your grip pressure. Yeah. Grip pressure is going to influence how easy it is for that club face to turn over. Right. We'll notice sometimes your misses, you leave it a little open, you leave it a little bit closed. Um, so that's, that's important. Um, I definitely wouldn't tell you to go put more wraps of tape yeah. under the grip or anything like that. Um, probably don't have the largest hands, I'm going to guess. No, no yeah. pretty standard. Pretty standard, yeah. Standard, standard size hands. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, I like the standard, the, the Tor Velvet, just based on what you're kind of telling me there. But grip pressure is huge. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why I was testing out the softer ones, just to kind of see like what that would. So my tendency is always to grip too tight. Um, so definitely something in, in this realm, uh, maybe even slightly softer, would be something I would go with. And you know, gr the big biggest thing with grips, you can interchange them out and test different things, and it's yeah. not a big deal. So yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, in conclusion here, probably the biggest thing, biggest takeaway here is MOI and forgiveness. It's not so much that you're going to pick up five miles an hour ball speed of, of a driver, a well-fitted one you might, with the right loft on it and the right golf shaft, mm -hmm. but you were already well-fitted as it is. You were already seeing your efficiency rates were great. We noticed your launch angle, your spin rate profiles were already perfect. See, you, you, you made it hard on me. From right. there, I was just trying to listen to you, what your goals are with your driver, just to help you out a little bit. I think it's worth upgrading the driver every couple of years. Yeah. I think you switch up from the from the Sim Max going to the Stealth. It's going to be a good option for you. It's going to be a little bit more forgiving. You may pick up a little bit more distance, but that's more so much just on average with regards to your off-center hits. Mm -hmm. You're just going to get away with those a little bit more. I'm not going to say the ball's going to go way faster. Right. There's, there's going to be times where you might pick up a little bit more distance, but newer technology is not always going to give you five miles an hour ball speed. It's just not going to happen because there's limitations. Right. Yeah. So golfers, I hope you love this video. Jackie, I hope you enjoy the new Stealth Driver if yeah. you end up upgrading there. Um, I, I would stick with that same golf shaft. The nice thing is you've already got a tailor-made tip on that yep. already. Already know that golf shaft's an extra drop charge with the, anyway, so you can probably just sell the, the golf shaft that comes with the driver yep. and then put your old driver shaft on, you'll be, you'll be set.